Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's faculty webinar series uh, on Business Source Elite. We have Lisa Jones from EBSCO, uh, who will train us on this wonderful resource, along with another one we have available for faculty through the UDC Library website. Um, for attending live today, you will receive a certificate of attendance, and the session is being recorded and will be sent to you as soon as it is available. And you can share that widely with anyone you think may be interested. Please leave yourselves muted, but feel free to drop your questions in the chat during the session. Afterwards, we will have time for a live Q&A where you can unmute yourself and ask your question. And we will also provide unrecorded time to ask questions as well. So Lisa, take it away. All right, thanks everybody for coming. Let me go ahead and just start to share my screen. If someone can just confirm that they're, you're seeing your library A to Z resource list and yes, that only. Okay, good. So this is Lisa Jones. I'm a trainer for EBSCO and uh, I'm down here in New Orleans today. And this is basically all I do is when I'm not traveling for EBSCO and training on resources that you have available to you from EBSCO, then I'm, all, I'm doing online things. Um, so definitely if you do uh, have any questions, um, now is the time, you know, or if you wanted to make sure that I covered something that you just kind of have a burning question, you can go ahead and put that in the chat now. Uh, let me make sure that I'm not leaving anyone out. Let me pull up a few things here. Um, and so Megan's going to be monitoring the chat, so questions through unmuting or at the chat. And then we'll also allow time at the end uh, when we stop the recording to have a, a discussion of things that maybe that aren't really like officially recorded. Okay. All right. So we are going to be talking about two resources today. Uh, one of them is your, I'm just going to go to the B's here. So one of them is going to be um, the Business Source Elite. Mm -hmm. And so what I did is I just Googled this Business Source Elite, and I'm going to show you a little bit about the content. So it's super easy if you just want to know a little bit more about the content. And what I do is I, I really like just these bullet points. Um, but I can also get like a whole journal list if I want to see what well, are my favorite uh, either popular reading magazines and or uh, academic journals. Are they included in this? So there, here's one way you could kind of find out. But if we just look at this, we're looking at a lot of non open access resources uh, and magazines. So you have a lot of full text in here. You have, uh, then you do have, you know, peer reviewed full text. So there's just a kind of a little bullet point there of all the things that, you, that you're getting when you're searching uh, business source. There's one other resource that we're gonna look at today and it's called Regional Business News. And I kind of look at these, searching these together uh, because a lot of times maybe we're looking for the latest information about a topic and we maybe wanna read uh, some, you know, articles that have been published in magazines or journals, but we also might want to read what's in, uh, you know, what's in the latest news, what are the newspapers doing? So if you look at this one, this is also on your A to Z list under the R's, Regional Business News, we're looking at 40 active, full text, non-open access, U.S. and Canadian business publications, all right? But so we'll be searching those two today, and let's dive in and do that. So I have a little backdoor way to get in just because I am, but let's go ahead and you know what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to just pull in both of those resources. I'm going to just jump in like you would. So on your website, you can just jump into one of them business source, but if you want to search both at the same time, just jump into one of those regional business news or business source, and then click this and then go ahead and grab uh, that regional business news. Right, so now I'm kind of searching two things at the same time. Uh, so I just have some search terms today. And the first one I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in something pretty simple. I can spell it right, is mismanagement style. So this is a pretty broad search. Remember I'm searching um, hundreds of popular reading magazines, plus things like Harvard Business Review, Fortune, Business Week, Inc., um, U.S. News and World Report. I would categorize those as more popular reading. I'm also searching a lot of scholarly or, um, you know, academic journals. 
And then I'm searching uh, company reports and trade journals. And so lots of things that I'm getting when I'm searching, just doing this. And then I'm also searching those news, uh, those newspapers. It's taking my two words or the any amount of words that I put up here. And if it's more than one word, it's actually doing this and, and you know, to find my resources. So it, it, what it's doing is it's looking in the title of the item, article, uh, you know, trade journal, whatever it is. It's looking in the title. It's looking in the author field. It's looking in the sub publication type and the subject field. And it's also looking in the abstract or description of the document. And it's doing a proximity search. So it's really doing, it's looking for my words near five words of each other. So when you think about, well, what's happening in the search box, now you know. It's doing a proximity search of near five words and it's looking in those areas of the document in the key top metadata areas. And then this is what it's come up with. Um, so if, as I scroll down, you know, you have your search list here, you have the title, and then you have more information about, about the document. You already saw that if I just hover here, I can see the full description. I don't have to click in, you know, to read the description. And then I have my access points here. Let's look at the number two and talk about the difference between What's going to happen if I, you know, click on the PDF? I'm just going to go right to the full text. Um, also, the HTML is a uh, more of a text version of the full text. Uh, but what what is this here? So this is using your Open URL Link Resolver, and it's saying that you own this top this item, right? So it says, well, you own this small group research uh, journal. Um, but you own it somewhere outside of EBSCO. So it's using this link to try to then tell you to get to you to where you own it. All right. So that's how you would look at these links here. You're going to stay within the interface here. You're going out to look for it in another place. And it should be uh, fairly, these should be fairly resolvable uh, as far as, you know, getting you to the item. All right. Any questions about that? You can put it in the chat or unmute if you'd like. Let's talk a little bit about some of the filters over here and uh, then and then we'll go in and we'll look at some of the items, the items that you have available when you are reading the document. So first of all, a lot of times in business searching, you are looking for maybe uh, the newest information about the topic, right? Because the business world, a lot of things are changing really quickly. So how is this list sorted? Uh, we know why those things, those items are there and we know where they're coming from, but why is something first, second, third, fourth? So you are using a relevant sort here. Relevance is saying, how many times do I see your keywords in a lot of these fields? And then it's saying that's going to be more relevant than others. And it's using the subject field. It's weighing the subject field as the heaviest indicator of, uh, of the most relevant item. So instead of, so if I, if I click down this relevance, I can just quickly put date newest, but I would suggest that you leave it at relevance uh, and, and kind of find your date newest information a little bit uh, in a different way. Okay. There's someone that's coming in, not muted. So if you can mute yourself, that would be great. And actually, I think I'll mute. So, um, Let's look at then how would I tell which is the latest information about my topic. So I think this is a better way then because the way this system is looking or the way the system works is if you just did, you know, put it by date newest, this database is updated nightly. So what you're going to get is you're going to get the latest information that was entered in last night, not necessarily the most relevant. Um, so you really want to make sure, I would say, leave it at relevance and then use this. Let's just say if I want, well, I want to just have things that were published just this past year, or let's say, let's give it like a year in the couple months that we have. So I'll say 2020 to 2021, and it is filtering. I had 15,000 items. Now I'm down to 239. 
So I know these items were published in the last year and then up to, uh, you know, up to now. Up, and then even a little bit in the future, possibly, like let's just look at this one, April 2021, because things are published with an advanced publication date. All right. Another thing I can do if I want to make sure that the items are in this resource and I don't want to have to use these links to go out and find it is I can use my full text limiter. That's going to then make sure that I'm going to get everything that only has PDF or HTML available. If you did notice, you do have some videos that are available. The videos are what I would call um, down in New Orleans, you would call them lanyard. So it really is just something extra that's available to you. These are coming from AP and UPI newspaper or um, news resources. And they're kind of, what I would like to say is doing a little bit of a dumb search in the back end. So when I say that, it's basically just looking at um, the uh, closed captioning of the video, of what the video was titled and everything. And it's still kind of looking at my, um, my keywords and it's saying, well, these might be relevant to your resource. And that's the videos, okay? If you wanted to do that, you could do view all resources and then kind of ser search through those. But my result list is getting kind of tighter and tighter. So you can see that what I've done is I'm actually building then my list. And I've gone from 15,000 items just in two clicks to 56 items that I can really manage. Um, let's go ahead and jump into one of these. And I will, uh, let's talk about like, why would you choose one of these over the other, okay? So both of these are gonna have all of the text of the document. You're not gonna miss out on any text. The text version, HTML text version, most likely you're, you're not going to have the pictures, the graphs, the charts. Uh, but there's a reason why you may want to highlight and use this version, or you may want to steer your students towards this version. And the reason is these two things right here. So if you have any students that have a need to translate the document in the interface itself, and I believe there's over 36 languages now, um, then that's one reason why you may choose the HTML version of this of this article over the PDF version, okay? Another reason is if you do have a student that's sight impaired or just has, uh, prefers to have the article read to them as opposed to them reading it, um, this is also where the embedded listen is, is available. Uh, so here's where I can actually, if I wanted to, I could download it into an um, MP3 format or I can just have it kind of read to me out loud as I'm um, possibly maybe, you know, helping write my paper. So there's these two things are unique to this HTML full text version. Um, the other tools that aren't unique that are available anytime you're reading the document, so in a PDF or in a HTML full text are these tools here. So let's look at them. So if I do want to upload it to a Google Drive to save for later, I can do that. I can also add it to a folder, which I would say is, uh, is an EBSCO cloud. So this would be the Google Cloud, and this would be loading, loading this to the EBSCO cloud. Um, if you are using folders to save items, maybe you're assigning uh, readings, um, and using kind of the, some of the same readings over and over in your classroom, uh, or as a librarian, maybe you're just saving some, inf you know, some information that you want to share with other librarians for professional development or so on, you can actually then create a folder here um, by signing in and just creating a folder just like you would anywhere else, you kind of create an account, and then you're able to then save those things to the folder and have them there available for you for later use, all right? And that would be when you're helping students and let's say they don't have a flash or, or flash drive or they don't wanna print it off. Or if you're just telling them, hey, if you don't wanna save it to your Google Drive or you don't have one, just go ahead and save it, you know, in, you know save all your research into one folder and you can continue to go back to that. And then once they're, uh, you know, ready to, to 
possibly like, let's say, create that paper that they need to do. They're going to have all that information available to them and readily, you know, ready for them to then kind of go through and see what's going to be most relevant uh, once they start to work on their paper. So the other things are, I can easily print this off if I'd like. I can email it to myself or others. So as a student, if I'm doing a group project and I find something, I can email it to my group. As a faculty member or librarian, if you're finding things that you want to share with students, you're also easily able to then email it um, to them. If you want to save it, this is just downloading the PDF and saving it. Um, also, let's look at the site. So all of these, if I click on them one time, I have uh, the option to, you know, then I kind of have this thing open, whatever it is, could be the site, the save, the email, and then I have some options here. So we already know that um, there's lots of different citation formats. Um, most likely for this, you're maybe using the APA um, or the MLA. So you're looking here, you're, the student is grabbing the resource or the um, citation code, putting it in their work cited, and uh, you know, and then you're editing it for them or helping them to figure that out. And a lot of these things, it's kind of nice because you see how all of these are clickable. So if you are using Chicago uh, Turabian, or if you are using, let's say, APA, you're able to click on that, and it tells you the version right there. But this also gives you kind of a cheat sheet um, from the APA version uh, seven, I believe that was. And it gives you kind of here's your example. So journal article, here's the pattern, here's the example. So that the students can do a little bit of editing if necessary uh, right then and there. Any questions, let me know, okay. Uh, so that would be, that was the site tool. Um, if you are exporting into like a Noodle tool, EasyBib or uh, EndNote, or if you are doing any kind of bibliographic exporting for research, there's all these different options to include uh, CSV if you don't see your preferred um, bibliographic management tool. All right. And then the notes actually go with the folder. So if you do have a folder created in EBSCO, I can make notes for this document to kind of remind myself then why it was important to me. Right. Let's look at this same document. I'm just going to close this. And let's look at this same document then in the PDF format. So PDF, anytime you click PDF in any EBSCO database, you have basically opened up the journal, you know, the, the journal and went to the page of that article. So you can see that it is the full article. It's going to be 21 pages. I can see up here. This is just the PDF reader in the middle. Um, I have my same tools over here. There's my email, my print, and so on. Um, but something here on the left hand side is a little differently. So really what it is, it's showing me that I am in California Management Review. It happens to be from November 2020. Here's where I can navigate. Let's just say if this was um, one journal that was possibly for this month was focusing on my topic that I wanted. You know how a lot of journals will pub will publish in a month and they'll kind of focus on one topic. Maybe I want to go ahead and move around and read some of those other articles that are in here. So this is just like them turning the pages of this journal. And there's one other thing I want you to see. So anytime you're in any PDF, you can also do then that choose another issue. And this is then looking at the issues. I would, you know, look at this as kind of looking at the issues that are on your shelf. So I have a lot of backdated issues on the shelf, and then I have possibly newer issues because I'm looking at November 2020, um, then here is the February 2021 edition, and so on. So other ways that you can manipulate or maneuver within the specific journal that you happen to be looking at. All right. Any questions, put them in the chat. Um, we do go. have one question. Uh, sure. There's a question on if business cases are included. Uh, business cases. So there is, let's go to advanced search and let's then look at some of the filters that we have. And I'm sure they are, but 
and you know, I know they are in here, but kind of the thing is, is if they are included, then how best do we search them? And you can probably, I just went to advanced search because the first thing I would do is I would look at possibly the document type to see if the type of document that you're looking for is included. Um, so I'm gonna look here, but that doesn't mean that it's, you know, just if it's not listed exactly the way we think about it, that doesn't mean it's not in here. So first I would review here. And if I didn't see the type of document that I'm looking for here, like their speech, um, some review and so on. And these are a little generic, you know, like my, probably you're not gonna get a recipe in here, but you could try it if you wanted. Um, and then I might look at the publication type here. If I don't see what I'm looking for here, I kind of want to think about, well, let's see if that would maybe be listed as the subject. So I think that's where I would go first. So you can pull these down. Before I pull this down, if when I just did that management style, it's basically, basically looking at, remember, all of these areas. So the title, the author, the subject field. Let's limit what we're looking for as a subject and just put in. And if I know that I would want to, so let's just look, do this kind of generically and see what happens. And then I would most likely want to add, if this looks like it's working, then I would probably want to add my topic to see, because it looks like that, um, you know, this is going to be, this should be all the items that list business case within the subject, right? So I think that this is a good start where most likely the majority of these items that, I, that came up are business cases. Then you might say, well, my topic is, let's, you know, I'm just gonna use this first one, would be diversity. I really wanna know of business cases and diversity. Um, so this is then where you're building your search. You're gonna leave this at keyword because you really want it to be anything that has something to do with diversity and business cases in the subject term. This is probably what I'm looking for. So let's just see what happens here. And you see how I'm saying, let's just see, because I'm really kind of doing this on the fly, but I'm in the meantime, I'm kind of showing you then how you can build and try to dig down uh, for items that you, that you know, you're kind of looking for in here. Does that answer your question? I think so. They can correct us if it doesn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you could also do something like this. So let's talk about some of the other search terms here. So I'll just take that same business case, you know, and I'm saying I want this to be in the sub -term, subject term. In other words, it really, you know, it should be a business case, right? Um, then I could actually look at my search terms. I think one of your very useful search, your um, filters over here, besides the full text or the publication date, is actually this subject, the source terms. So open up this, and this is will really tell you then um, kind of the items that you can then filter by. So all of these resources over here, all these filters over here are very relevant to what's going on exactly in this list only. So this, this list is telling me I have 162 articles out of academic journals that have something to do with business case. Um, the same thing with my subject term. So if I really wanted to say I only want it to be subject, I might do that or I want business cases on project management, then I can filter by that and then look over my, um, my result list to see if that's then uh, going to help me. Remember, I'm gonna be you know, looking in my thing here. So here's a no blame culture, something, something. So I can see here if this is then meeting my uh, needs for that research, okay? Let's talk about a few other ways that you can do some, um, some real detailed search in here. And I wanted to show you this. Um, if I do this plus sign or this uh, question mark here, I'm just gonna open up this page. And I just scroll all the way down. This does have information about um, how you can search within the, re within the database, how you can use expanders and your filters and, um, other things, but what I want you to do is just open up that question mark and then actually go all the way down and let's click on business source elite. So this is going to tell me some of the searchable fields. So if I look at this, 
I can see then different ways. So if I wanted to know if I co-wrote a paper with someone and I wanted to see if it was published or with one of my faculty members did, um, one of my colleagues did, and I wanted to see if it was published in here, um, I could actually use this code and then put the university, you know, kind of gives you the example. So here's the code, here's what the code does. And then here's the example that you would use in the search box. Um, so you can look at this and this is really detailed. So there's that format. If I'm only looking for a PDF document, if the item has to be in PDF, you could actually filter by PDF and you would actually put this exact um, FM, there's the code, and then P is going to filter and only give you PDFs. So you can use that. But let's look at this one. I want to show you how to use this one. I think this one's really useful, the date code, because um, we're really getting down to, I want to know the latest information about this topic. I'm going to just do a new search to clear everything out. And um, I'm going to just use a topic that's pretty hot in the uh, business world right now. And uh, it's kind of a new word introduced into our vocabulary too. So there's a couple different things you could do here. Um, but let's just say that I wanted to know if anything's been written about Dogecoin within not just like this year, or I can actually um, use a code here, that DT code, and then um, do some, you know, really detailed searches. Before I do that, let me go over and kind of just show you that. I'm going to click on help here and go to this connect site. And it's already right here. And if I just type in DT, because I know that's the date code, I wanted to show you this and I can share this paper with you too. I think it's really useful. Um, so you can see that if I typed in DT space seven. I'm literally telling the system it had to have been published within the last seven days. So if you have a really hot topic that's out there, a lot of people are writing about it. Um, it's being published. Remember, I told you this is updated nightly. Let's see if what's being written about. What about DT 30, DT 90? Basically, the capital D, capital T space, and then a number. You can go up to 999, that's going to be days. As soon as you go to that fourth number, um, then it's going to actually look at that as the year, right? So let me show you then how something like this could be uh, used in, the, in our search. So if I just put in, I want to know if items have been published on Dogecoin, which is, you know, that electronic currency. And I want to know really what's been published in the last 30 days. Okay. So I'm just doing that. Here's my keyword search. Here's the time limit. Um, and I know I have 98 items right now, but what out of these 98, what's actually been published in the last 30 days. And I'm going to do search. And I see I have seven. So I think this is a good thing for you all to know about. Let's say if I wanted to go out 90 days. So this is something that's really good for you to know as a super searcher, that if you really want to get down to, and if especially if you had something like a more like, mm, So let's do that. So let's see, well, what's going on? What is Kamala Harris came out and said something that rocked the business world, you know, and I want to know then I can't really remember what it was, but I know it came out. Um, we know this is going to be probably a lot of things that mention her name. So let's just say within the last 15 days, right? So about two weeks. And then hopefully I'm going to be able to then kind of see what's been going on there with her, okay? So I think you get that. Let me do one more thing and show you, um, let's talk about company profiles and let's also talk about then searching for a specific publication, okay?
So I'm going to just do my search again of management styles. And I just want to give you an idea of all the items that you're searching in here. So remember, we're searching lots of different resources. I'm not going to do any limiters here. I can see that if I wanted to, I could, I could filter by scholarly. Um, or I could filter just by academic journals here, or maybe I am looking more for a popular reading magazine, but let's look at the publication field. So I'm just going to open it up here, and I just want to actually do show more, and this is just to give you an idea of all of the items that are being searched. Um, as kind of faculty members and librarians, we probably like this in a uh, alphabetized order. This is showing me in how many articles that are coming out kind of in the highest level. I see right up right away. There's Harvard Business Review, New York Times. Um, if I just click the name, I'm actually doing it in a um, alphabetical order. So I see a lot of then different academy. There's accountancy, there's ad week. Um, and as I continue to go down, I see black enterprise. So remember popular reading journals and a lot of then uh, academic journals too. So there's entrepreneur magazine, finance week, Forbes. Um, I'm just gonna continue to scroll down so you can see there's HR magazine, there's Harvard Business Review. We already saw that Inc. Um, MIS quarterly is in here. And then here's all these different then Journal of Accountancy, Business Research, Journal of Business Strategy, lots and lots and lots of resources in here. Okay. So let me cancel that just to give you an idea. That's how, you know, these are the kinds of things that you're searching. Let's look at uh, company profiles. So company profiles, uh, most of these are coming from the market line reports, okay? And I just click up here and what I'm doing is I'm then looking for, this is how you can easily find a SWOT um, report because most of these company profiles are going to include the SWOT analysis uh, page. So if I did uh, something like just, let's just say Tesla, um, I can match any word or I can just keep it alphabetical. I can browse then here and I can then see and hopefully then find you know, my, my item. If I click on just the company name, it takes me to the top level record of that company, gives me information about the company. And then what I like too, is that I can use these related information searches. Well, that will then search for uh, kind of open journals about Tesla, um, then academic journals about Tesla or news items about Tesla. So if I wanted to do that, but what I really want to do is look at the market line report. So I'm going to do that. So these market line reports are all updated and you can see that this one is actually from February, 2021. It's kind of small there, but that's, you know, that's where you can kind of get the publication date there, or it was also on the uh, detailed record page. But if I go to that second page, I can see here um, if a SWOT analysis is available. And for Tesla, it isn't, but let's go back. And let's just do, if I just do something like Raytheon, then you can see here's, this one's inactive, but this one is active here. I'm gonna jump right into that market line report. And this is gonna be more typical. The SWOT analysis then is gonna be available here. So I can go right to page 37 in my document um, and then pull up that SWOT analysis. And if I need to, I can just print that one page off. Here we go. Any questions about that? Let me know. So SWOT analysis, yes, definitely in here. Those company reports or company profiles um, are going to be available for you to search. And then let's see. And then let's look at how you can search for a publication then. Okay. So remember, we're searching two different databases. And what I want to know is, uh, is the Washington Post in this regional business news, right? So I just want to know, is, is that newspaper in there. So I'm going to pick my database first. I went to publications and then I'm going to say, well, I'm not looking for a journal because this is mostly where the journals live and the magazines live. This is where those newspapers live. So I clicked on that one and then it tells me here I'm searching 
regional business news. If I search here, I'm just still doing a keyword search in those two databases. Um, but if I search here, I'm only searching for publications that are listed in regional business news. And I, I can just put something like, I'm just gonna use that keyword of Washington um, to see what comes up. And I see that I have something called Washington Post Newsfeed. If you see that it says bibliographic record only, that means it's not in full text. The next one actually shows me that I do have full text and I have the Washington Post. So if I click on it, this will then give me all of the back issues so I can look down and I see I have a lot of back issues here back to February 20, 2003. But what I'm looking for is kind of the latest information. So if I um, open this up, the Washington Post is a daily so if I'm looking for something, you know, that has, or kind of want to say, well, what was published? Um, that's actually today, right? 3.30, I'm like, well, what day is it today? <laughs> so I'm, um, so I just clicked on that 3.30 and I can see that I have 72 articles out of the Washington Post from, you know, from the date of 3.30, 2021. And then if I do want to read, um, one of the articles, then I can go ahead and uh, open that up. I want to know what the wizards did last night. And um, wait a minute. Then that wasn't, that wasn't, let me see if I can get some full text in here. You should be able to read the full text right here. And maybe, I don't know, maybe there's something going on here. It's just giving me the abstract right now. Possible we caught it in the middle of an update for today. Yeah, or Thursday. maybe because it was because it was today's, you know, like I yeah, like it's just loaded that because sometimes there's a little delay on that. Um, we can try that again. But anyway, I can I can just wanted to kind of let you know of if you're looking for a specific publication, uh, and then you might let's see if I limit it to full text, would it still be there? It may go away. It may recognize no. I don't know. Yeah, we'll check on that. Um, but it should be able to, you know, when, once you see that, you should be able to then to read the articles. And usually the articles can be, you know, very small, with you know, just maybe a couple paragraphs or so. But you do have access to a lot of them different magazines in that area. All right. So um, we've looked at just how a just keyword search is done in here. We've looked at all of the different resources, um, how to filter by different resources. We've done a couple company profile search. I showed you what I think is a really good one, that DT. Um, oh, I know. I wanted to show you one more thing. So using that DT code is really, really good as far as, you know, just saying what's been published yesterday about this topic um, or in the last three days about this topic, especially if it's one of those, a hot topic um, that's been a, getting a lot of writing on. Um, but I wanna show you this right here. So let's go back and do that Dodge coin. So there really wasn't that many articles. This is fairly new. Well, it does help you with spelling, thank you. So what I'm really looking for, it kind of knows, it's like, are you looking for Dodge coin? That's a little bit more um, relevant than that Dode coin. But um, so here it is here, Dodge coin. I can do a filter for full text because I'm really helping the user find something right now that's relevant. So I have 81 items. Um, what if I wanted to look at something for scholarly? Now, most of these items are coming out of um, more of popular reading, right? News and all that. But has any scholarly journals published anything about Dogecoin? It's telling me no. But what I want you to do is I want you to remember that you have this really powerful tool here that says, you know what, if you can't find it, go ahead. And if you get zero to few results in any of your searches, remember this tool right here also search within the full text. So I don't care if it's a major part of the of the um, journal article. I just want to know, was it mentioned in an academic journal article? Was this term mentioned? As soon as I do that, I'm just going to do search. I don't have to change my search terms. 
Um, and I usually will then get a few things. So you can see that these are articles that are talking about, you know, what it sounds like, you know, the uh, electronic currency, right? But just, it didn't come up in the first place because remember where I told you it was searching? It's only searching in the top level of the metadata by default. If you wanna force it to search within the full text too, that's how you do it. And I've gone from zero articles that are scholarly, that have full text access and that mention my word to nine. And just by clicking that one, um, this also search within the full text of the articles, just by adding that, I've gone from zero to nine. Okay, so we're about 45 minutes into the session. I want to make sure that we have enough time for any other questions, sample searches that you'd like me to try, uh, or anything else that Megan would like me to show. So if uh, you have any questions at all to ask of Lisa, please drop them in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself. Uh, again, I want to thank you for attending today. We will share the recording after this event, and I'm dropping a link in the chat to a survey uh, just to provide us with some feedback on this session. So we will give a minute or two for questions to roll in. Okay, and should I turn off the recording now? Uh, let's wait a minute just in case any questions come in, okay. and then we can give time for... I think right. I'll go ahead and drop in chat that um, that DT kind of that cheat sheet on how to use that date limiter too. Great, thank you. I have one question. Uh, this is Dwayne Jones. How, how do we get students access to this information? So we will have access to, to the recording, but are students getting the same? Yes. Um, okay. So this recording is going to be posted on our YouTube page. And when I send out the recording link that goes to our public YouTube page, and if you mm -hmm. have students in mind, you can just share that link with them. Okay. And um, what if students don't visit our YouTube page? Is there a way to get the information out to them? Um, um, we, do sure yeah. we do our best to market these resources to students through our okay. social media and our blog posts. Um, but again, if you have particular use for this in your class, a librarian is happy to come to your class and talk about these specific resources if you wish. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. So there was a question in chat too about how current are the company reports and the market line. Um, so you did notice that one, and I didn't pull that out because it was new, um, but the Raytheon report that I brought up was from February, 2021. So I think as soon as marketing, you have to think about um, just like your library gets things on a daily basis mailed to them, right? And then you, you process it and then you put it on the shelf, right? So it's kind of the same way with EBSCO is we get these things from our partners on a daily basis. And so we process them and then we update the resource. So this is gonna be very, you know, as soon as we get something new from MarketLine, as soon as they furnish us with the um, updated report on any of these or on a brand new company, then we will put it in the system. So I would say they are very new and relevant. And if you do see something in here from 20. 2020, let's say, which is just three months ago, um, that just means that there's, that is the newest one on this top, you know, on this company. And in terms of those recent materials, are any of the publications embargoed in any way for recent things? Or is it anyone who partners with you, you get the updates as soon as that information is available? Yeah, so you can find out the embargo information. So yes, some of them will be embargoed. So let's just look. I'm just I just went to the publications. I chose business source and um, I'm just going to do a subject. So if I did a subject of. I just want to know, well, what kind of marketing actually I could do match any words. So what kind of marketing journals are in here, right? And how do you read this? So if I just said, well, I'm the marketing librarian, I could do management, I could do human resources, I could do any keyword here. And then here's how you read this resource. So for um, Business Source Elite, you are going to have a lot of different, you know, different types of resources. So if I see bibliographic records only, and a lot of these are going to be individual just reports, not necessarily journals. Um, and if I don't see something that says full text, then this is not full text. But let's continue to go down. Hopefully, I might have to review or um, do it. OK, so if I can see here, all of these are just bibliographic records. Maybe you own them in another place and you would have that other link, you know, your open URL resolver link to look for it. But if I look at this marketing tools, 
I see this is published and it's if it says to present, it's in full text to present, that means that there's no embargo, that it should be available to the present, you know, to the most recent re um, journal that we have from marketing tools. And the same thing with these others. Let's see if, and then look at this one. So I see this one's going to be not embargoed at all, but it ended on, um, you know, there's no more publication. Probably the publication stopped being published. Um, on 2016, but it, look at the next one, marketing science. So it tells you right here, there's a 60, um, 60 month, which is a long time. Usually it's more like 30 days or 60 days. So it does tell you the embargo. And what that means is that marketing science will be available in full text up to the embargo time. And I would say, I, you know what, in fact, I have never, I've worked for EBSCO for 10 years and I've never seen a 60 month delay. So that's really rare. But if I go over, usually it's three months, um, but I can tell here, no matter what it is, I can see, I can look for my journal. And if I do have a question about it being embargoed, I'm gonna be able to find that information here. Great, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, uh, thank you for attending. Lisa, why don't you go ahead and stop the recording?